Good morning. It's not often Miss Hepworth is on a Wednesday doing your sessions on YouTube with you. So it's very nice to see you on this Wednesday morning. I hope you've had a lovely weekend, a great Monday activity, fab Tuesday session, and today is Wednesday. So you need to make sure that when you're getting any resources out for today, you're going to your Wednesday pack. And just so you know now in advance, the resources you are going to need, we're doing two activities today. So for activity number one, the resources you are going to need are your light blue paper, your paints. I'm using red, green, yellow and a blue paint, but it depends what colours you have. And you're also going to need a black marker pen. For activity number two, you are going to need a roll, like a toilet roll tube or a kitchen roll tube. You are going to need some scissors. You're going to need paint. There should be a pipe cleaner in your pack as well. And then I am also using paint and I have felt it pens and glitter glue to decorate. And then you should have some sort of dried food or ingredients in your pack as well. I'll be using dried couscous. You may have dried pasta or lentils or rice or something similar to that. So I'm going to give you a little bit of time now to go and make sure you have all of those resources before we start our activity. So pause me now. And if you need to go and have a look for them, you can go and do that now and unpause me when you're ready. So I hope you have all of your resources ready. And if not, I hope you've managed to find something that we'll do instead. So for example, if you don't have any paint, hopefully you have some felt tip pens and you can use those instead. It doesn't matter too much. Um, now the story we are going to be reading today is a book called Barry, the Fish with Fingers. Now, I don't know about you, but I have never seen a fish with fingers. Now I know what fish fingers are, but I don't think they are fingers of a fish. Not sure, but I don't think that's what they are. So but today we're going to read Barry, the Fish with Fingers, and we'll find out all about him. Barry, the Fish with with fingers. Now it says down here, Sue Hendra, and there's only one name on the book. So I had a little bit of a look inside the front cover and it turns out the reason her name is the only name on there, as well as Barry's, is because she wrote the book and she's the illustrator as well. So she is the author because she wrote the book and she is the illustrator because all these fabulous pictures you will see in the book she has done as well. So Sue Hendra is obviously a very, very talented lady. She's not only written the story, she's done all the pictures as well. So let's have a look. This is the front page. Let's have a look at the back page because on the back page, there's a different picture by the same lady, but there's a different picture and a little bit of writing on here as well. So I'll read that to you now. Have you ever seen a fish with fingers? No? Well, neither had the fish at the bottom of the ocean until they caught sight of Barry. So that's the bit of the back. Now that's called a synopsis. And that little bit on the back is a little caption or a few sentences that kind of summarise what the book is going to be about. But we could probably guess that. From the title Barry the fish with fingers. So let's have a look inside and start reading this fabulous story. Puffy the puffer fish could blow the best bubbles. Other fish would come from miles around to see his bubble blowing show. Big bubbles, small bubbles, round bubbles, square bubbles. They had never seen anything quite so amazing until they caught sight of Barry. Barry was no ordinary fish. Barry was a fish with fingers. You can see his fabulous orange, bright orange fingers there, can't you? And you can see his beautiful blue scales as well but it's really his fingers that are catching everybody's eye. Suddenly, everyone wanted to find out more about the amazing fish.
fish with fingers. What can your fingers do, Barry? They asked. Tell us, tell us. You can see all the little fish there, so excited to see Barry. Although I'm not too sure Puffy the puffer fish is that happy. I'm not sure. He doesn't look as happy as the other fish, does he? Well, said Barry, fingers mean finger painting, knitting, cutting and finger puppets. So you can see Barry's fabulous finger painting there. He's got an easel with his paper on and he's done a picture of a fish, hasn't he? And he's doing fingerprint painting inside the fish's body. Then you can see him knitting. He's on a lovely rocking chair with some pink wool or yarn and he's doing some knitting as well. Then cutting, you can see he's made what looks a bit like a paper chain down there. That's very cool. And then finger puppets. Look at all the different finger puppets. He has a little elephant. I think that's a brown bear. He has a lion with a big yellow mane. I think that's a red and green snake and it's the tongue that gives the snake away. A little pink pig. And on his other hand, he looks like he has a cheeky little monkey, a gingery cat, a little black bunny rabbit. I think the next one's a little chick. And then he has a red octopus. Oh, that's what I think it is anyway. Let's count his tentacles. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I think that is a red octopus on his other finger. So this gave me an idea for our first activity. So we'll put the book to one side for now and we'll have a think about our first art activity. So Barry's finger painting gave me an idea and I thought that's what we could do as well. Now paint takes a little bit of time to dry so we're going to do finger painting and then we're going to come back and finish this activity at the end when hopefully the paint has dried but if it hasn't then you can just come back to it when it has dried so don't worry too much about that. So for our finger painting you are going to need a piece of paper now you might have some coloured paper I've got blue because it's going to be the C if you don't and you just have white paper, that's fine. You can use felt tip pens or your paints to make the background and make it look like it's under the sea. But I'm lucky enough to have a piece of blue paper. So you'll need some paper and then you should have some paints. I'm going to use three colours. You should have a selection of paints in your pack. And then I'm also going to need a black marker pen. That will be for the part we will do when the paint has dried. And then I'm also going to be using some kitchen roll or a towel as long as you have permission to use it because it is going to get paint on it. And then I'm also going to use a cotton bud to put the paint onto my fingers. It's a little bit cleaner and tidier than plunging my thumb into the paint and it will go everywhere. If you don't have one, uh, left over or you don't have a paintbrush then you can just put your thumb or your finger in but just be careful when you're doing it so if you need to pause me to go and get those things you can do that now and then you can press play when you're ready Okay, so the picture you need to be looking at is the picture underneath activity one because they are the resources that you will need for this activity. The light blue paper, I've got red, green, yellow and blue paint but if you have different paint that's also fine and then a black marker pen. So those are the resources you need to go and find and you have plenty of time to go and find those. Pause me if you need to and then unpause me when you've got all of those things ready. And don't forget, I also said I'd be using some kitchen roll to make sure that I'm not walking around the house with paint all over my fingers and touching lots of things and making a mess. So if you need to go and find a grown up and ask them if you can use some kitchen roll or maybe some tissues or toilet roll or maybe they have a cloth they don't mind you using, you also need to go and find that now as well. Oh. 
Okay, so the first colour I'm going to use is I'm going to choose my blue colour. So I'm using my cotton bud to put a little bit of paint onto my thumb. But like I said, if you don't have one or you don't have a brush, you can just put your thumb in, but just be careful you don't make a mess. And then I'm going to put a big thumbprint down. That's going to be one of my little fish. And I'm going to do one there as well. And then actually, I think I'm going to do a little baby fish to go with one of those. So I'm going to do my little finger because you can see that bit's a lot smaller. So I'm going to do two little baby fish there to go with that one. Then I'm going to change colour. So I need to go and wash my hands and my fingers and then I can do a different colour. If you need to do the same, you can pause me now and then press play when you're ready. Okay, so the next colour I'm going to use is my green colour. So I get my cotton bud, or if you don't have one or a paintbrush, then you very carefully dip your finger into the paint. Bit of paint on there, and then I think I'll do a little green fish up here. Put a little bit more on, and I'm going to give that fish a little friend to hang out with. So I'll put another one there. And then because I'm lucky enough to have green, I think I'm going to use some of this green to make some seaweed. So I have green on my thumb and I'm going to just do some seaweed like that. Poking up from the seabed. So there's my seaweed. If you've got felt tip pens, you can do it in felt tip pens or you can use your paint too. So I've given myself a little bit of seaweed there and let's put a little baby fish with these two. There we go. So I'm going to go wash my hands before I use my last colour on my picture. If you need to do the same you can pause me now and press play when you're ready. Okay so I'm ready to use my last colour I'm going to use the red. Now I'm going to try, I'll do a little fish first, a little red fish, this hopefully will look quite nice, you can go over there with that blue fish. And then I'm going to try and do a little starfish. So I'm going to use my little finger because that's smaller and I'm going to try and do a starfish. So that can be its little head and then I'm going to try and do the shape, a bit tricky of a starfish. So let's see how my little starfish is looking. So I've got some little fish, some seaweed and now I've got my little starfish and I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to leave my sea paint in to dry and then we can come back to it at the end of the story. So if you need to pause me now to go and put your paint in somewhere to dry, you can do that and press play when you're ready. So whilst our first um, part of the activity is drying, we'll come back to the story um, and we'll find out what happens next. So, so far in the story, all of the fish were so excited because Puffy the puffer fish was blowing the most amazing bubbles they'd ever, ever seen. But then all of a sudden, Barry, the fish who has fingers, came along and that's all they were interested in, finding out all about Barry who is the fish with fingers. So we found out the great thing about having fingers is you can do finger painting, knitting, cutting, and he said finger puppets too. So let's find out what else, because here it says, but best of all, fingers mean <gasps> tickling. And you can see Barry is chasing the other fish and he's tickling them with his fingers, isn't he? The fish have never had so much fun. Come on, Puffy, join in, said Barry. But Puffy didn't want to join in. He was feeling sad. Now nobody wants to see my bubble blowing show, he sighed. 
I hate Barry's fingers. They're stupid. Oh dear, so we were right, weren't we? Puffy the puffer fish is a little bit jealous because he isn't getting any attention anymore because everybody is interested in Barry and I think Puffy feels a little bit left out. So while Puffy sulks on his own, Barry and the other fish had a whale of a time chasing each other through sea caves, in and out of seashells and through the seaweed. But all of a sudden, Barry stopped dead in his tracks. He heard a loud splash and a rumbling noise. Then the sea got darker and a big shadow covered the ocean. Oh no! cried Barry. Oh no! cried the fish. A huge crate had fallen into the water and it was going to squash Puffy. So you can see Barry, Barry has his fingers, his hand over his mouth and all the other fish got their mouths wide open and they are worried too. And you can see Puffy is on his little rock and he still looks very, very sad. And it does not look like he has noticed that a big box has fallen into the sea. Quick, Barry, do something, cried the fish. And that was when Barry did something truly amazing. He pointed. Look out, Puffy! And you can see Barry is using one of his fingers and he is pointing to the big box above Puffy's head. And Puffy has just noticed it because of Barry and he's looking up. He looks very, very scared about the box that might drop on top of him. And it says here on the label, musical instruments. And there it was supposed to, instead of going into the ocean, they were supposed to be for Mr. Drum, who lives on Guitar Lane in Songville in Toontown. But they've fallen into the ocean and they are about to squash Puffy. With a loud crash, the crate hit the seabed. Was it too late? Had poor Puffy been squashed? Phew! No, he hadn't. Thank you, Barry, said Puffy. You saved my life. I'm sorry for being a grumpy spoil sport. Can we play Tickle Chase? But Barry had a better idea. Let's party. Take it away, Puffy, he cried. So Barry played the piano, Puffy blew the trumpet, and everyone had the best time ever. So I'm so glad that Barry, the fish with fingers, that the story of Barry had a happy ending, especially for Puffy the puffer fish. I was feeling very sorry for him when he was left out and he wasn't having a very nice time. But then he realised that he didn't need to be jealous of Barry and he could be friends with him as well. So I was really happy. There's a really good message to that story as well. So that now brings us to our last activity um, to do with Barry the fish with fingers. So you can pause me now if you want to go and um, get your resources for activity number two ready and then unpause me when you are ready. Okay, so the underwater party really made me think what could we make? And I thought we could make another instrument to go with their party. You can see Barry's playing the piano and um, Puffy the puffer fish is blowing the trumpet, isn't he? So I thought we could make our own instrument and we're going to make a rainmaker. So here are the things you need. So the resources you are going to need for this one um, is your roll. So I have a toilet roll tube, an empty toilet roll tube. You might have um, a kitchen roll tube. And if you definitely don't have either of those things and you're a bit worried about what you're going to use, if you can find some card, you can always make your own roll or tube shape 
from a piece of card. So please do not worry if you don't have an empty toilet roll tube or a kitchen roll um, tube to use. So you're going to need one of those. You will also need some tape and some scissors. Um, you will need lots of tape, not just little bits, so make sure you have some tape. You're also going to need your pipe cleaner. You should have one of those in your pack. You will also need some paints and any decorations you have for the outside of your activity. And then you will also need some sort of dried food. I will be using dried couscous, but you may have lentils rice, pasta, you may even have some beads of some sort in there. So you need to go and get the dried ingredients that are going to go inside, which are the bits that will make the noise. So they are very, very important. So if you need to go and find those things now, you can pause me, unpause me when you are ready. And if you are looking at the slide from the beginning, you are looking at activity two. That has a list of all the things you will need. Okay, so for our rainmaker, the first thing we need to do is take our toilet roll tube or our kitchen roll tube and we need to use the sellotape. So if you've got, you should have some tape. If not, you can go and ask. And if you need help from a grown up to peel it and to cut it, then make sure you go and ask for some help now. So the first thing we're going to do is cover the end so that when we're making our noise with our instrument, all the bits don't fall out. That wouldn't be a very good instrument. So you're going to get a piece of your tape and we're going to put it over the top to start sealing it up. So I've put one piece over there like that. Then you need to take another piece and you might need help from a grown up with this because it is quite fiddly. So go and ask if you need some help. So I'm going to put another piece over here like that and I'm nearly there you can see there's just a little gap here so I'll take another piece it might be a good idea to have them cut before if that's helpful for you if you have the bits of tape already cut up and then you can just stick them over and I'm going to put one more because I really don't want all the bits of my instrument to fall out when I'm trying to party so I'm going to put another piece over like that so you can see now there's no holes in there and it's sealed up and then you're going to do the insides okay so for the inside of our rainmaker we need to put our pipe cleaner inside the bit we've just covered up is down on the table and the pipe cleaner needs to go inside. Now, obviously it isn't going to fit if it is straight. So what we need to do is turn our pipe cleaner into a spiral. So the best way to do that is if you have a pencil or a pen or something like that nearby, then we're going to take that now and we're going to use that to help us. So you put your pipe cleaner under the pencil and you're going to wrap the pipe cleaner around like that to make a kind of spiral shape and then you can take it off and there we go we have a little spring like sp um, pipe cleaner so once it's all bent round like that it should be closer to fitting inside our rainmaker so it's poking out a little bit but it will be fine when I cover the top so you need to do that with your pipe cleaner. If you need to pause me now to do that or to go and get some help, then you can do that and press play when you are ready. Okay, so the next thing we need to do for the rainmaker is we need to put our instrument inside so the bits that are going to actually make the noise need to go inside because right now it sounds like this 
I am not feeling like I want to have a party. That is not kind of music, is it? That's just silence. So we need to put inside the things that are going to make the noise. Now, I'm using dried couscous, but you could use uh, pasta or rice or beads, whatever you have in your pack to make the sound inside. So we need to be very careful we don't spill it and we're going to put it inside really carefully. So I'm going to pour, and you can already hear it starting to sound like our rainmaker, like we want it to sound. So if you need some help from a grown-up to do that, that's fine. I'm not going to use all of mine because I don't think I need all of it. I filled it about halfway up because otherwise if it was full to the top, that wouldn't make any noise either. So I filled mine about halfway up and I'm happy that there's enough in there to make a good noise. I could hear it when it was going inside. So now what we need to do is we need to put some tape over the top. Otherwise, when we tip it up to make a noise, it will make a noise and it will make a mess. So we need to put a lid on our rainmaker. So we take out our tape. If you need to pause me now to go and get your tape, then you can do. Or if you need an adult to come back and help you. And then we're going to cover the top of the rainmaker like we did with the bottom. So tape over the top until there are no holes so that nothing falls out when we are partying. So tape over the top. Okay, so I have sealed all of the top up, or at least I hope I have. I hope there's no gaps around here. I've got my pipe cleaner inside. I've got my couscous in there to make a noise. So you might have rice or pasta, beads, lentils, whatever it is you have in yours. And now is my test to make sure. I know there's no holes in the bottom because nothing has fallen out. But let's see when I turn it over if anything falls out and if it makes a good rainmaker noise. So let's have a look. And you can see nothing is coming out. So that's good news. Some of it has stuck to the um, tape on top, but that's fine because there's still lots inside there. And you can hear it catching on the pipe cleaner inside and falling down. So the last thing I need to do now is I need to get my paint and my paintbrush and I can decorate my rainmaker. You also should have some uh, glitter glue or you might have some other decorations in your bag and you can decorate your rainmaker to make it look fabulous. So you can pause me now and go and do that. So here are some rainmakers um, that other people have made and there's some really good ideas for how you could decorate yours. So you can see lots of bright patterns, um, bright colours as well. Um, this one has some feathers and some beads on there. But don't worry if you don't have those. You can also do something similar to this one where they have cut out different shapes of coloured paper. So if you don't have the coloured paper, you could cut out different shapes and either paint them or colour them in. So you don't need to have beads and feathers, but if you do, you could make something as bright as this one. And you can see there's paper with different patterns on. So you could even cut up other pictures from like magazines. Obviously you need to check first, but things with different patterns on and those shiny bits look suspiciously like chocolate sweetie wrappers to me. So if you had something like that, you can even put those on. You can be as an imaginative as you would like. So 
now you have hopefully finished decorating your rainmaker and we can go back to thinking about activity number one because if you remember we left our finger painting to dry and there's one thing on our resource list that we haven't used yet. We've used our paper, we've used our paint and we've definitely used our fingers and thumbs. The only thing we haven't used yet is the black marker pen and that is to draw detail onto our picture so it looks more like an underwater scene with uh, finger painting. So you can pause me now whilst you go and get your black marker pen and we can finish activity number one. Okay, so my finger painting has now dried, so if yours has, then you can also draw along, and if not, then you can watch this bit back later to finish off your picture. But mine is dry, so I'm now going to take my marker pen, and I'm going to add some detail to my underwater finger painting. So I've got my little fish, but they don't really look like fish, they look like I've done a thumbprint in paint because I have. So I now need to make them look like fish. So let's start with my little green family up here. I'm going to give it a little eye. I'm going to give it a tail and a little fin. I'm going to give it a little smile too. And that's a happy little fish. And then I can do the same with my other one. And with the little baby one too. So I've done my little green family and I think I'm going to add some little bubbles because we saw lots of bubbles in the pictures in the story of Barry, didn't we? So I've done my little green family. I'm going to do the same with my other fish and then I can add some detail to the seaweed and I'm going to make my little starfish a very happy little starfish and he can be blowing some bubbles too. So you can use your marker pen to add to your picture and make it look even better than before. hope you enjoyed listening to the story I now know that probably that's not where fish fingers come from I think Barry was just a very very special fish who happened to have fingers so I hope you enjoyed listening to the story I certainly enjoyed doing the two art activities it was a little bit different today we made a musical instrument so that's quite nice um, as well as a nice picture or a nice painting to go along with it as well so I hope you've enjoyed today's session and hopefully I'll be seeing you for another session very soon have a great couple of days until then, and I'll see you later. Bye bye. So you have some time now to finish off any of your activities, especially when you're using paint. It often takes a little bit of time to dry. And also if you've put some decorations on things, then the glue will need time to dry before you can do anything else. So you have a little bit of time. There's some nice music to listen to whilst you finish off any of your activities. Have fun.